What up, love muffins? It's me, Keisha, and I'm back with this week's All to Y'all Shade Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 4, Episode 7 Review. I give tonight's episode a C minus. It was all right. Um, there was a whole bunch of fakery going on in this episode, so let me get right into it. Um, so, we started off where we left off with the last episode with Margot and Mimi meeting for the first time and Margot was very nice to her nicer than I would have been for a bitch that was fucking my goddamn husband and she introduced herself she shook Mimi's hand she was very cordial and Mimi had to just start talking about some oh so you claiming her now <laughs> and Margot was looking like hold up bitch like I was just nice to you like what's the turn on for and then they get the arguing and shit and me be all on some get your hand out of my face get your hand out of my face Nico you better get your wife get her hand out of my face I have a daughter don't you understand that I have a daughter at home that's gonna see this shit stop it get your hand out of my face face and I'm just like Jesus Christ I can't stand this bitch and they did a whole bunch of arguing and Margo exposed the fact that Mimi was in on the uh whole porn tape which we all fucking knew then we switched to Kirk and Ashley in the car you know they ain't doing nothing but circling the highway the motherfuckers ain't no out of town ain't no hundred miles away and young jock conveniently calls and tell um Kirk that you know I didn't know you was having an auction my nigga you should have told me I would have gladly came down there and bought some shit actually I'm down here now I'm about to buy some shit and Kirk is acting like he ain't no shit about it and that little whole little storyline is just so fake and so whack to me and I just was not here for it at all because it's like come on y'all like y'all not gonna sit up here and make me believe that this woman had an auction for her husband's stuff and he knew nothing about it and Jock did and it's just stupid then um we switched to Mimi and Eva at the Universal uh, Circus and Eva's just a cute little girl it's just so sad that Mimi and Stevie J are her fucking parents and uh stevie comes out and surprises her and she's so excited and so elated and after he got done performing with the uh circus act or whatever he came and sat next to them and you could just tell on mimi's face that she was just like happier than she's been over the last two years because she wants to be a family again with this nigga whatever you can call because that shit ain't no motherfucking family but she want to be back with that nigga so fucking bad and and then it switched to them going back to her house and they're in the kitchen and uh even uh what's her name Mimi says you mind if I open this wine and I was <laughs> just looking like she gave him this look like you mind if I open this wine my pussy <laughs> I was just like you know she want to fuck and Stevie was looking like no nah, I'm good go ahead and do you ma do you and I'm just like Ugh. like y'all just or just so fucking disgusting to me and Mimi just want to bust it wide open for Stevie so goddamn bad like if head nigga breathe on her she will fall into a fucking puddle of water um then they get to talking about Penny Candy aka Jessica Dime Peace and Stevie J alludes to the fact that he might have slept with Penny Candy and I was like oh lord here we go again with Stevie fucking somebody that Jocelyn know you know all hell is about to fucking break loose and Stevie is about to fucking die. Uh, then we go back to uh, Kirk and Rashida in that fake ass auction. And so Kirk just magically gets there on time before everything is sold. And um, Rashida and her ghetto ass mama and them damn thick ass sideburns start turning up. And the mama like, what are you doing here with her? And <laughs> Ashley Thomas said, y'all don't want it with me. Y'all don't want to go there with me because I ain't got time for this. Y'all don't want to go there with me. You just mad because your husband cheated on you. And Rashida tries to go back off on her, but... Rashida can't read to save her fucking life. It's just like, if y'all gonna have a scripted ass storyline, at least get you some fucking good lines in there. Because this bitch been reading you for filth all season. You ain't shot back not one time with a good line. And Ashley then, um, after Rashida said something to Ashley, she like stands there and looks at Rashida and pauses and does this. And then walks off on some dramatic young and the rest is as the world turn bullshit. And I'm just like... Oh. Please let this be their last season. Like, nobody believes their fucking storyline, Mona Scott. Please get these niggas off of her. Then we switched to Cabbage Patch, a.k.a. Kadia, at the spa. 
And she talking about how some after she found out Jock was still fucking baby mama number three or four, that um she packed her bags and moved into a hotel. What kind of simple-minded shit is you on, bitch? This nigga stand with you and you moved out your shit? How dumb are you? Like, make this nigga leave your shit. He ain't doing shit no way. Like, make that nigga go stay over there with Kirk and Rashida ass. Why you got this nigga over there laying up on you? Like, how desperate are you? And I'm just looking at this bitch because I will never forget on her first episode this season when she came back talking about so she do this she do that for a living and she got 50 million jobs and how she's spending all this bread on him but she walking around this goddamn show looking like a bag of nickels looking like the basic of basic of bitches i'm like her her ain't never on point her clothes ain't never on point the motherfuckers too little she always trying to show her body like she is shaped like a video vixen and she's shaped like an xbox 4 <laughs> like no bitch and then we go to jocelyn and uh uh Carly at the um gym and Car I mean jo Jocelyn was just reading Polar Mimi fulfilled about Joss I mean Mimi's 70 million jobs since season one. She done been a, a a maid, a porn star, a manager, a author now. And I will say this, Jocelyn has kept in 100 since season one. Jocelyn ain't been nothing but season one but a a, a hoe. <laughs> And a rapper. She ain't switched her shit up. Not one. And I am here for Jocelyn. And then as far as this Miko and Nico uh, book deal, y'all. Let me hip y'all up on gang. This shit's so motherfucking fake. First of all, she talking about some they signed a three book deal with each other. And then he uh, gets 25%, which is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. The dumbest of dumbest of shit. Uh, and if you don't know what I do for a living, this is my hobby. What I do for a living is an author. I'm a national best-selling author. I have over 20 books that have made it on Essence Magazine's bestseller list, MTV, all kind of bullshit. Anyway, Google me. Anywho, so let me tell y'all something. When you sign a fucking book contract, first of all, the contract states your name, your address, your social security number, this, this, and that, uh, the name of the book. Uh, you have a timeline in which to turn the book in, and a novel is between sixty to 90,000 words. I don't know what kind of contract Mimi talking about she had that she's able to give this nigga three books that are children's books with illustrations. You ain't signed no goddamn autobiography contract and then are able to weasel your way out of the deal by giving this nigga a book of illustrations. No, ma'am. No, sir. Because there ain't no motherfucking contract. You cannot do that shit. If you want to weasel your way out of a, a book contract, if you don't want to do that shit no more and you have a contract for 60 to 90,000 words, your best bet is to write do re mi fa so la ti do 70 million times in order to get your ass out that goddamn contract. You have to write 60 to 90,000 words words and turn that shit in you just can't give a motherfucker a book of illustration and the cat in the hat drop the ball and then that's the damn thing that's the book no ma'am no sir try better and then another giveaway is that she gives this nigga the book he ain't the motherfucking publisher you don't turn your book in to your so-called agent or manager you turn the motherfucking book in to the fucking publisher girl bye and then last but not least jocelyn and that hood ass breakfast that made me hungry she Make that nigga some scrambled eggs, some toast, and some motherfucking Oscar Mayer hot dogs and fried that bitch. And I was like, yes, bitch, that is the best breakfast ever. The breakfast of motherfucking champions. And they got the arguing. And all I could concentrate is uh, Jocelyn was serving us wet and wavy wig and a beat face and gave us nothing but body while she had.